So cleaning agents are those uh, cleaning agents are those uh, materials that we are going to use in housekeeping to help us for cleaning purposes. The materials that we are going to use in housekeeping department for cleaning purposes are what are termed as cleaning agents. And remember, they have specific characteristics in them that are going to help us for cleaning purposes. So good cleaning agents, you will find that they have good wetting power. That means they have their ability to make a surface thoroughly wet. Then they have good suspending power. That means once the dirt and the dust comes out of a surface, they cannot be redeposited, like they cannot go back to that surface. Then a good cleaning agent must have good emulsifying power. To emulsify is normally to break the bonds of grease and oil from a surface. So now let me get back to the notes now. So a cleaning agent is any chemical, including water, that will bring about or assist either physical or chemical removal of soil from a surface. So it is any agent that will come either as water or any other thing that you're going to talk about to help in the removal of physical or chemical soil from a surface. A physical soil while a chemical soil is one that has some compound. It is a mixture of things inside it. Classification of cleaning agents, we have water as an example, number one. Then we have detergent. Then we have abrasive degreasers, acid cleaners, organic solvent, and other cleaning agents. So upper equal category, other cleaning agents, a bleaches, a bleach is a cleaning agent, to go a deodorant, na to go na disinfectant, antiseptics, and sanitizers under that category. So let us start with the basic thing where we have to study the pH scale. So you just know very well from chemistry what was the function the pH scale. It, used to, I do, it was used to tell us the difference between compounds. Some compounds are weak, some are neutral, while some compounds are basic in nature. Whereby acids and alkalines are divided into two. We have weak acids, then we have strong acids, same to alkalines. We have weak bases and we have strong Basis. So you find that weak, the strong acids come have a pH of zero to three, while mm, the strong acids have a pH of zero to three. The weak acids are from three past three. Let me say three point one to six.
Then neutral substances. Aya, nimerudi tena. Sinilisema mungoji kidogo. I was speaking a call to assist another teacher. Aya, sasa simuna nisikia. Muna nisikia sasa nimerudi, sindio? Mwende, can you turn your microphone and tell me that umechelewa na unanisikia? Nimechelewa na nakusikia. Sao. Na nitanza kukati kuchelewa. You are just seeing now. Metrin anaingia tu nikimuona. Valentine anaingia nikimuona. Merina ya anaingia mechelewa. Alafa na turn microphone on. Aya. 
corona itaki makasiriko acha tuniendele lakini bevijiliwa mhm so nilikuwa i was discussing about the ph scale nikasema we have acids are divided into two we have weak acids and strong acids then we have examples of strong acids to kuna sulfuric acid hydrochloric acid as examples weak acids examples to kuna lemon juice na kuna vinegar then we move to neutral substances number one is water as a major example of a neutral substance with a ph of six to seven then we also have the neutral soaps and you find that the ones that we use for bathing purposes yes they have some alkali alkaline compounds in them as an ingredient but they are mild in proportion so they are not as reactive as other ones and they are now the detergent that we normally use for washing the delicate fabrics we have in housekeeping department so like a housekeeper you will be forced to buy some pieces of cloth made of animal fibers and you will animal fiber kama ngozi ya kondoo horse ama silk when you have those types of fabric remember you cannot wash them with the normal detergent kama omo ama wende ununue eh kuaduka zitaribika so you wash them with the neutral soap we have in the housekeeping department then we, we will have weak alkalines in housekeeping department they have a ph from 8 to 10 apo ivo so examples what kuna toothpaste to kuna powder ya jivu etc as examples of weak alkalines then strong bases from 11 past 10 to 14 so these are the caustic soda borax as examples that we have in housekeeping department and that the strong alkalis in place so that is the ph scale it is used to determine the ph value of a cleaning agent so whether once you get the power of becoming a housekeeper you must know the ph value of each detergent so that you can treat it accordingly or else they are, they are going to spoil cleaning surfaces in the department and even they can harm the users our room made our staff the staff made cloak room attendant etc So let us start with the first cleaning agent in housekeeping department and it is water. Water may be termed as a cleaning agent because it is the simplest cleaning agent that we have in housekeeping department. It is the first one that you will meet in housekeeping department. But water has a major problem in that it has high surface tension. So swali ni what is that characteristic of water having high surface tension it means that the molecules of water are tightly held together therefore the cleaning process is normally quite hard so what do i mean by the molecules of water being tightly held together it is that when i pour water on a surface bit floor ama menta it will just be there even if it is a sliding surface water will just slide and move to the end but if you look at what water has done to that surface there is nothing there is no cleaning action water will have done there so that is that characteristic of denis leo umekuja and i was really looking for you hmm. mungu amekuonekania mm, so that ability to hold bonds the water bonds the that ability to hold the bonds inside water together that is what is normally termed as that characteristic of having a high surface tension so when a cleaning agent has high surface tension it can never conduct any cleaning that's why we add other cleaning agents in water to lower the surface tension of water 
to facilitate now the cleaning process. So notes zinasema, uh, water has high surface tension uh, because it has low wetting powers. Ni me explain water cannot make a surface get wet, but it will just stick on that surface and then it will flow if it is a flowing if it is a sliding direction. The other thing, it has poor ability to hold soil in water. Nilisema in the previous topic, soil ni uchafu. So that means when soil gets into water, basically it just mixes. So tukuna different types of soils to lisema up even in housekeeping department. Soil can be tarnish, soil can be mchanga, it can be litter, it can be ink, etc. So water having a low ability to hold suspension in water in a manager. Mchanga ikingia kwa maji, it will mix and even change color of water. Therefore, kazi utakuwa unafanya ni kuendelea kuchafua that surface. Eh? If it is ink, donku na jaribu kutoa kwa flow. Na ujeka any other cleaning agent. The ink will dissolve into the water and now you will start more with the red color or the white color etc so that is the poor ability to hold soil in suspension that's why we add other cleaning agents to lower its surface tension then the third characteristic of water it is limited its limited ability to emulsify grease that means if you are cleaning some oil on a surface with just waters the cleaning agent utaendelea kumop na yo oil. So that whole surface will become oily. So water does not have that characteristic to hold grease while we are conducting cleaning. So it is these bad properties of water that enable us now, have enabled us now to add other cleaning agents into it so that we can facilitate the cleaning process. First things first, we need to know about water. That is water in terms of its hardness. In the hospitality industry, we require a lot of water, basically in all departments. Front office, water kunywa, service, they will use it for different functions, kuosha, kupanguza, glasses, etc. Kitchen, they will need it. So, because of, <coughs> excuse me, because uh, the staff require a lot of water, we cannot buy water from Nairobi sewerage company. But you will find in the hospitality industry, what we do is we dig boreholes. Mnajua vizuri water from the borehole is hard water. Why? Maji basically has two salts in it. It will either, maji, maji has two salts. They are normally calcium salts and magnesium salt. Ata ukinunua mineral water utaona. Two basic salts besides sodium, chlorine, sulfur, etc. To any water has two basic salts. It will be calcium and magnesium. But mvua ikinyesha, Hii maji ikiteremka yende uko underground uko mpaka kwenye tutaipata kwa kisima inapat, inanza ku mix na vitu zingine hizi mawe zenye ziko huko chini they also have some compounds surrounding them so that is where we meet the carbonates and we meet the sulfate so calcium it react na hiyo carbonate calcium it react na sulfur those ones are what will now bring water hardness in place carbonates cause temporary water hardness, while sulfates cause permanent water hardness. Erika meamuka 841. So nimesema, carbonates cause temporary water hardness, while sulfates cause permanent water hardness remember any hardness will will lead to wastage of detergents 
of cleaning agents and other things that we are just coming to discuss next. So what is normally done? A housekeeper is normally forced to purchase things that will assist in the removal of the water hardness. So temporary water hardness is normally removed by heating that water to temperatures of 72 degrees centigrade. You heat the water to temperatures of 72 degrees centigrade. That water will become soft. So that water is normally, you take calcium ions, yamaji, you react it with the hydrogen carbonate, and you wake up mchanga. Hmm? Then you get the water now is normally termed as calcium hydrogen carbonate. So the water that is now calcium hydrogen carbonate. So you may to calcium come example at a magnesium body to go to magnesium hydrogen carbonate. Then you now you heat the water kwa moto had 72 degrees centigrade. If the water had temporary water hardness, it will come out. Permanent water hardness is removed by three methods. Number one, we normally have addition of soda. Hmm? A strong base you add inside that to react with the water. And it is normally the caustic soda. Unaongeza pondani, unastakwa hiyo maji. The permanent water hardness will come out. The second way how we remove it is by the use of a sequestering agent. And the example of a sequestering agent we normally use is normally sodium hexamatophosphate. That is the example of a sequestering agent we have in housekeeping department. The purpose of a sequestering agent is normally to prevent The purpose of a sequestering agent is normally to prevent the formation of scum. So it will be dissolved inside the water to prevent the formation of scum inside the inside the water the third one we normally have is normally at the third way how we normally move water hardness <clears throat> is normally the use of permutic that is the third way how we remove water hardness so permutic is normally a container chini machine so that the water can pass through. Then we normally take the natural resin. Then to naeka hapondani. Then hiyo container. Resin itself is normally has sodium ions. Resin is made of sodium ions in it. I maji kikuja, remember maji ikona two salts, magnesium and calcium. Nani mesema, water hardness, permanent water hardness is caused by existence of sulfur in water. So chukua calcium, changanya na hydrogen sulfate, itakuwa calcium hydrogen sulfate. And I hope unajua vizuri the solubility ya calcium na, na sulfur, it was quite immiscible has a mix so a suspension was always created that's why we have scum in them so you take that hard water umechota kwa kisima you pour it inside permutate and you gonna eat beads the resin na nimesema resin ikona high ikona sodium ions attached to it one characteristic of um, one characteristic of uh, of uh, resin is that resin normally have it has sodium ions but it has high affinity of calcium ions 
what normally happens ukichukua hii maji yenye calcium hydrogen sulfate ukimwaga ndani ya hii container yenye iko na na resin chemical reaction will take place whereby calcium hydrogen sulfate it react na the sodium ions zenye ziko kwa resin so ionization will take place the sodium will take the hydrogen sulfate while the calcium will remain on the resin beads because resin have high affinity of calcium ion so maji nitapita kwa container sasa itakuwa sodium hydro, sodium plus hydrogen plus sulfur hapo kando so that is now the water that tunakunywa kwa tap ndio tutakuwa sasa tunatumia on a day to day basis I move to the second cleaning agent. So we have softened the water. Maji tumechota kwa kisima. Tumesha hii soften sasa. It is now ready for use. And now we move to the second cleaning agent, which is a detergent. A detergent is normally a cleaning agent that is used in conjunction with water to remove dirt and suspend it from a surface it prevent it from redepositing back to the surface basic characteristic of a detergent number one, good wetting power so that means a detergent is able to make a surface thoroughly wet number two, good emulsifying power to emulsify it is to break the bonds of oil and grease from a surface number three good suspending power that is the capability to remove dirt from a surface and prevent that dirt from going back to the surface so mtakikuliza basic characteristic of a detergent ni hizo tatu basic characteristic of an ideal detergent ni hizo tatu good wetting power good emulsifying power and good suspending power other characteristics of an ideal detergent is as follows. It should be harmless to the user and the surface being cleaned. It should be biodegradable. That means it should be able to decompose. Bisha maliza kuitumia, even if it is going through the sewage, ama kwa shimo, wherever mutakuwa mnapeleka, it should be able to decompose. Next, it should be effective in both waters that we have. We use warm water in housekeeping and cold water without forming scum. It should be able to cleanse reasonably with minimum agitation. Agitation wani kusugua. Next, it should be easily rinsed out and it should be economical in use. Unatumia tu kidogo na tunaendelea. Chemical composition of a detergent. So this is the composition of a detergent. As a housekeeper, you must know. The basic ingredient in a detergent is normally known as a surfacant. A surfacant is the active ingredient inside a detergent. So its characteristics, the first three, good emulsifying power, good suspending power, and good wetting power they are normally inside the suffocant the suffocant has a head and a tail a suffocant has a head and a tail the head is normally termed as the hydrophilic end while the tail is normally termed as the hydrophobic end so kichemistry na english tunajua tu vizuri imagine the way ukisikia tu the word hydro you know it's water philic kiangalia kwa dictionary is to love while phobic is normally to hate so the head part of a suffocant is normally water loving while the tail part of of a suffocant is normally water hating. 
So that means wewe ukichang ukiweka maji kwa ndoo unataka ku clean then you add detergent it is the head that normally get mixed up with the water because it is the water loving part the hydrophilic end but the tail part of the suffocant why in a bucket ikihang kazi yake ni nini inangoja kitu yenye sio maji because it hates water so in the itapata itangoja mafuta ikuje mchanga ikuje ink ikuje uchafu yoyote nitakuja the tail part of the suffocant will hold it together that's why it is known as the hydrophilic end it hates water therefore it will get attached to anything that is not water that's why when you go to pour away the water utapata sasa uchafu zenye zilitoka zisha zisha ka uko chini ya container zisha disuspend uko chini sasa ziko held together by the hydrophobic part of the suffocant the other ingredient used to make detergent we have the alkaline builders remember most detergents most powerful detergents are alkaline in nature so they are made by alkalines so detergents are normally made by a process known as saponification where we react an alkali with fat or oil the process is known as saponification so i hope mkikuja hapa mkuja ngi kusikia news si makumasai yako hapa but kuna kuanga na makaratasi za kuandika vitu naongezea ikifika kwa mtiani utajua si news so detergents are made by that process nimeandika hapo saponification reacting oil or fat with an alkali so the other ingredient in alkaline builders they include soda borates silicate they normally help in the softening of water process when the alkaline builder is mixed with a suffocant the mixture becomes synergetic inakuwa stronger sasa tukianza kazi zetu in housekeeping department zinatusaidia we have a bulking agent added the purpose of a bulking agent is just to make the detergent to flow freely we have forming agents added to another to, uh, to detergents they are also ingredients for making a detergent their purpose is to ensure there is lather lather povu in the detergent then we have chelating agents added and chelating agents are just sequestering agent na nimesema kazi ya sequestering agent is to prevent the formation of scum then we add suspending agents they help in the removal of dirt from the surface and prevent them from getting back to the surface bleaches are also also added to the detergent and the purpose of a bleach is normally to whiten surfaces so we normally have a small amount of a weak bleach added to a detergent known as sodium perborate kidogo tu ndinaongezwa ndimefanya sasa mimi mnafua nguo na unakuja unasema hii nguo yangu hata sijaiweka kwa jif sijaiweka sijui wapi but in a fade tu that is the availability of the presence of bleach in a detergent the sodium perborate we add conditioning agent to a detergent so that the cloth after washing it will remain crispy something crispy is fresh firm and dry we add whiteners 
to a detergent. The purpose of a white a whitener ndio itafanya uone hii nguo nimeifua ama right now to go cleaning. Ndio utaona ni, ni I'm cleaning this floor but imengara. I'm cleaning this floor haijangara. I'm supposed to do a b c d hivyo sasa so it is the whiteness the words in kuonyesha imengara hiyo ndio kazi ya whitener because of the availability of ultraviolet rays in it it remits ultraviolet rays to make you see imengara ama haitangara then enzymes are also added to cleaning agents The purpose of enzymes is normally to remove protein stains from a surface. Protein stains ni maziwa, mayai, basically mnajua protein ni nini. So they will fall on a surface and they will be required to be removed completely. They are removed by enzymes. Ata sweat is a protein stain. That's why pro enzymes are added to a detergent then we have germicides perfumes and dye stuff germicides is just germs so we add germicides to help in killing germs the nasal go to kifua perfumes hiyo ndio imefanya ukienda kwa duka unasema ninataka aerial ju aerial squeeze imeongezwa down mimi sitaki ushindi sitaki omo etc ndio ukuje ukinukia poa unaona so perfumes are added to this detergent squeeze hmm? badala ya kwenda kununua tena white soft white star kununua star soft not white star but kununua star soft kununua hizo down tena you find that this cleaning uh, this detergent as is zikompaka na hizo perfumes in them so ukienda kununua unajua unataka gani then dye stuff is to prevent a cloth from running kurani ni tuko na nguo zingine ukifua rangi zinatoka so dye stuffs are added into detergents to prevent the colors from running <laughs> types of detergents so detergents are of three calibers tuko na soap tuko na liquid synthetic na tuko na powdered synthetic so ndio hiyo soap are obtained by combining fat or oil with an alkaline ndio hiyo nimesema inaitwa that process is known as saponification characteristic of a soap sahi nikisema soap soap one ni ya kuoga kama detol imperial leather hizo sabuni za kuoga ndio zinaitwa soap ikifika za kufanya nazo kazi housekeeping hmm? we term them as detergent so ukichukua gel uweke mgeni pale kwa guest room ukichukua hiyo bathing gel inakuja ina liquid form that is a soap in housekeeping department characteristic of a soap na nilisema pia soaps ndo tunatumia kufua now the delicate fabrics we have in housekeeping department they are not effective in hard water or cold water they are best used as toilet soap toilet soap ni ya kuoga they are cheap and effective in soft water they form scum in hard water therefore they become difficult to rinse and they are not effective in acidic solution therefore soaps are available in cake and liquid soaps for personal use cake ni when you tend to use imperial leather ama detol kwa duka so hiyo shape the what you need in housekeeping as cake so they are available in cake and liquid soap si liquid soap mnajua hizo mashawa gels then it will also be available in a bar soap for heavier cleaning and laundry work then they are also available in flake and powder soap for laundry of animal or delicate 
fibers. We move to synthetic detergent, and they are the ones that are used for cleaning purposes. A synthetic detergent will either be liquid synthetic or powdered synthetic detergent. Liquid synthetic detergent are used for cleaning slightly soiled surfaces. Hizo ni surfaces haziku chafuka sana kama guest room. Tunajua tu ni mgeni mmoja ama wawili waliinki hapo ndani. While powdered synthetic detergents are used for cleaning very dirty areas. Kama staircase, corridors, penye watu wengi wanapita, therefore uchafu iko mingi sana. Ama ile guest room iliachua siku mingi ya ijapanguzwa. When we are doing periodic cleaning, we use the powdered synthetic detergent. The next cleaning agent we have is abrasive. The purpose of an abrasive in housekeeping department is normally used to rub or scratch surfaces. So you will find in a day-to-day -day basis when you go to perform some cleaning, you will be required to rub or scratch a surface to make it to remove the dirt or stains from that surface. So that's where we will have steel wool, we will have ash, to kona super bright, to kona pumice, stone, feldspar. All those that are used to rub and scratch surfaces. But we have very fine abrasives in housekeeping department. So it is the filtered chalk and the jewelers rogue. Those ones are the fine abrasives in housekeeping department. Ndua unapata watu wa restaurant wakisha fanya silver service. Izo articles of silver wazina wadal. I quit sharp and shiny the way it is supposed to be. So what akuja waombe or even in our housekeeping department to kona some articles made of gold and silver and they are supposed to shine. So once they decolorize, we normally take the jeweler's rug or the filtered chalk and we rub them pole pole to pole pole to and they will shine. So those ones are the high class abrasives in housekeeping department. The filtered chalk is also known as precipitated whiting. While the jeweler's rock is also known as the pink oxide of iron. The fine abrasives in housekeeping department. Moving on swiftly. Abrasives are normally combined with alkalis to remove grease on a surface, soap to remove dirt on a surface, glycerin as a lubricant so that we make that surface smooth if you rub them a scratch, chlorine to disinfect surfaces and stain removal, and organic solvent to dissolve grease from a surface. So to go now, these are examples of uh, abrasives and what they do in housekeeping department. Steel wool is fine when it is still new. Ukiendelea kutumia, itakuwa coarse, a bit rough. And it is used for heavy cleaning or removing of seals or waxes. Nylon material, polyester or metal parts, they are fine or coarse for cleaning floors. Something else that I need to talk about is the scoring powder and scoring paste. They are also abrasives used in housekeeping department. A scoring powder, e.g. Vim. Manajua what is Vim? Ikuapo na ingredients zake. 80% limestone. A very strong base in housekeeping department but it also has chlorine bleach in it to help in disinfecting and stain removal. If on alkaline builders in them to remove grease and release lather. 
when you are using vim it will scratch surfaces so don't use it generously generously don't use it too much but kidogo to imetosha mm? do not do not apply it with your own hands it will eat your hands that's why in asema apply with a damp cloth and rinse it off in fact is what make a kidogo now you just leave it for a very short period of time na unatoa utapata hata hapo kwenu kama unatumia vim kuosha cho utaona hiyo cho yenu imelika lika ina crack crack because it is very powerful and then vim should not be used on painted work or plastic surfaces wa ina scratch plastic surfaces ina kuwa rough na ina parara while painted surfaces zitafura then zinaribika zinaanza kutoka juu reaction na take place then you have a scoring paste axion morning fresh sikuizi ziko mingi sana in the market zenye watu natumia hata kuosha vyombo but they are also used in housekeeping department because they are mild in action they contain finely ground calcite in it polyphosphates and soda just for alkalinity purposes and ammonia is normally used as a preservative in it then you apply it also by the use of a damp cloth and you rinse it off one good with scoring pests is that you can use them on various surfaces vitreous surfaces enamel bath ceramic walls they are basically found those ones are surfaces inside the bathroom it is best applied by the use of a sponge and it is rinsed off toilet cleansers another cleaning agent in housekeeping department the purpose of a toilet cleanser is normally to clean toilets they come in two major form it will either be in a crystalline form or it will be in a liquid form the crystalline form ndio ile yenye huwa unaeka hapo kwa cho so that uki flush cho ina dissolve tu kwa maji there was another toilet cleanser squeeze in mekwa developed enye uneka tu hapo kwa cho almost hiyo area mtu kalia hapo kwa cho then uki flush ina dissolve tu kwa maji ukienda tu penye hizi hapix zinauzwa utaona tu inakaa tu round in shape that is the crystal line one then tuko na hiyo ya liquid ndio sasa kina happy blue domestos etc the the ones that are used so unta kikuliza what is a toilet cleanser it is a cleaning agent used for cleaning toilet the basic ingredient in a toilet cleanser is kong hydrochloric acid for the removal of iron stains daniacho so iron comes that the basic ingredient in our blood is iron therefore anything that you will excrete from your body is iron in nature and uh, metal stains are removed by the use of acids that's why in a toilet cleanser the basic ingredient is kong hydrochloric acid so when you are cleaning your toilet and using a toilet cleanser you should never mix it with any other thing ni mfanya tu chemistry juzi hapa mnajua the reaction of a kong hydrochloric acid on a surface So watu nimo hicho yangu ingari unaongeza omo huko ndani unaongeza mpaka jiku huko ndani alafu tena unaweka toilet cleanser that is a reaction that you are prompting and it is very risky so when you are using a toilet cleanser just read the manufacturer's instruction anasema nini and then apply it in your toilet next to kuna window cleansers they are used to clean windows the basic ingredient in a window cleanser is the isopropyl alcohol that helps in the cleaning of windows but e basically inakwanga tu applicable kwa window yenye si chafu sana 
But hizo windows zenye mnaweka inakaa inakaa mpaka ukijaribu kuangalia kwa dirisha hata uone gari hapo uwezi yaona you will use a lot of window cleansers therefore when it comes to cleaning of very dirty windows we just use the three types of waters that we normally have in housekeeping department so you will be equipped with with your piece of cloth the first bucket in housekeeping in kuanga warm water then you put detergent up on that. warm water with the detergent is just to remove the surface dust and dirt on a surface the second water is cold water with disinfectant to kill germs and the last water is cold clear water to remove the traces of soap so it is from this water in tunatumianga for cleaning purposes in housekeeping department do you need to improve your surface then send ukuje utumie the window cleanser so housekeeper pia huwa amejipanga anawapanga wenye mnafanya hii cleaning ndio isikue too much for you guys in the department we also have stains on this surface and in case the stain on a glass or window is oily by nature tutatoa na methylated spirit vinegar and you will rub it off patiently another cleaning agent we have is soda and ammonia these are used for removal of grease on surfaces so they are very strong alkalis and they are used for the removal of grease on surfaces and they are also used in case drainages zime block pipes zenye zinapeleka uchafu ziki block what unaeka is soda and ammonia into the pipes and they dissolve your uchafu haraka haraka we have acids they are used for the removal of metal stains so metal stains will be in the showers and baths they will be in the toilet all those ones are removed any stain that is metallic in nature they are removed by the use of acids but nitasema hivi if you are using an acid or a base to remove a stain on a surface you have to neutralize that surface ukimaliza tu kutoa hivi the next thing is to neutralize it remember these acids and bases are very strong na mtu anaweza kuja kanyage hapo na reaction it take place you will be liable sasa hii mnafunzwa law so sikiza chenye law inasema judi umesikia so let us avoid these thoughts zenye zinazofanyika when we are working so immediately umetoa stain by the use of an acid remember to neutralize it with a base if it is a strong acid look for a strong base to neutralize that surface if it is a weak acid you have to look for a weak base to neutralize that surface unapaka tu hapo juu yake then una rub una rub remember acid plus base ni water now we are leaving that surface neutral I hope ni meongea. Organic solvents they are also used to remove grease from surfaces. Organic solvents are divided into two. Tuko na the highly inflammable. So that means you should not use them near any naked source of fire. Examples benzene, acetone, amyl acetate methylated spirit and white spirit at a paraffin eco hub the only thing that we, the reason why we don't use paraffin in housekeeping department ni because ya roof so do not use them next to a naked source of fire kama unatoa uchafu then we have the not inflammable carbon tetrachloride, perchloroethylene and trichloroethylene. 
and you use them in a well ventilated area. Organic solvent also come as aerosol dry cleaners. Aerosol ni zile za kuspray kama air week na tropical wacho. So you can also spray it on a surface ukitoa chafu. Bleaches and disinfectants. Bleach are normally used to whiten surfaces. That is their major work, to whiten surfaces. And they are also used to disinfect. Muta kikuliza, an example of a bleach in housekeeping department ni nini? Sodium hypochlorite, sodium perborate. An example of a bleach in housekeeping department, sodium hypochlorite, Sodium perborate. Na hata bado tukola sodium hydrosulfite as an example of bleach. Ata hydrogen peroxide ya nyuele, ya kugeuza kala ya nyuele. It is also a bleach. But mta skulize bleach, alafu miabie jik. Judith. Type to turn your microphone on and speak. Usi type. So jig is not an example of a bleach. Jig is just a market name. Nipenye nita kuambia. Na nataka mkate. Then niambie. Like, ni, nita kuambia aje. Mm. I want to know how to make bread. Na we unaniambia. Unataka ni kufunze kutengeneza super loaf. Si process ya kutengeneza tu bread ni same. Whether ikue selecta, ikue super loaf, ikue whatever bread you know. The process of making it is the same. But you need brand names in the Zika. So an example of a bleach in housekeeping department is just the ones in the same. Usiniambie jik. Usiniambie. Iso zote muna jomna nungu kwa duka. Hakuna. Sodium hypochlorite, sodium perborate, Hydrogen peroxide or sodium hydrosulfite. These are the bleaches used in housekeeping to whiten surfaces. What is the function of a bleach to whiten surfaces and disinfect? We move to disinfectant antiseptic deodorants. Disinfectants are used to kill germs. What do you say? Ukisha maliza kuosha cho. By the use of toilet cleansers, uka rinse kabisa uka maliza. Remember to dissolve a little amount of disinfectant, Dettol, Roberts, Savlon, in water. Then you pour it on the toilet bowl. Here is just to minimize infections, to kill germs and prevent them from growth. Yondo ku clean cho. Or else, magonjwa zitawashika paka mwisho. So, ukimaliza kuosha cho, uka rinse yote. Remember to add disinfectants to kill germs. Disinfectant and antiseptics. Deodorants are normally used for masking smell. In housekeeping, we don't mask smell. Itanuka mbaka mgeni ya kifika kwa gate, anaskia. So, we begin by cleaning. After cleaning, then now we put the deodorants. Ukisha clean, ukamaliza, spray yo air wick. Spray yo tropical. Sawa. But, pia kwa kili yako unafuwa kujua that some people are allergic to those smell. Mimi personally, I don't like either smell completely. I'm very allergic and I can be very sick. So, pia, before weke hizo arufu, pia, unafuwa kufanya nini kujua the taste of a person. 
So deodorants come in different ways. Zingine ni balls, kama naphthalene balls. Na ikuwa uko kwa cho. Jackie, turn your microphone on. Mm, zingine zinakuja kama za kuspray, aerosol spray, kama airwick. Jackie, turn your microphone on. And then, mm, what else? Zingine ni kama zile zine zinekwa kwa gari. Zitakuwa zina nini aromatizers. Zitakuwa tu zinatoa tu arufu. Pole pole. Safari kiendelea. Polishes. Yo ni masomu gani jaki. <laughs> Polishes. The purpose of a polish is to provide shine on a surface. That's why we use polishes to provide shine on surfaces. Shine, sheen, or gloss on a surface. In the case of polish. Polishes are only used if there is no any other method to be used on that surface. And ensure that you have the correct type of polish to put on that surface. So polishes to put on metal polishes, to put on furniture polishes, and to put on floor polishes. Metal polishes are just used on metallic surfaces. Come on, we have silver articles, to put on brass, to put on copper, to put on paper. Zikianza kuparara. Furniture polishes are applied on furnitures. Remember we have furniture zinye zinakao. Zinanyeshe wa mpaka kuinje. Kila siku. So they will require that polish. On a day to day. Not daily. But to save after two weeks. After a month. Venye mepanga. Then to gonna flow polishes for wooden. Flows. One thing when you have polish, nilisema ta last week, but one. Ukiwa na nyinaka kama rangi ya kiatu, and yiko tightly held together. Yiko na a lot of wax. Ni wax ndo wai na hold together. Na yyo wax wa ni kanuba. The more buffing will be required. Na nikasema buffing is the process of making a surface shine. But the lesser the wax, that means that polish will come in a liquid ama in a spray form. The less buffing is required. That's why it has get to a fully buffable surface, semi-buffable surface, and dry bright. Fully buffable surface, dile surface enye, you will be required to, ukisha maweza kupaka polish ikakauka, you will be required to brush it kama viatu ukisha maza kupaka rangi utaacha ikauke kido then do kuje rub vizuri ishaim then we have semi buffable ni ile nyo utapaka then ikikauka utawana inajaribu kushaini peke yake kidogo so ukitaka ishaini kabisa venye unataka unafanya nini you buff it now then tukuna zile dry bright Unapaka ukiachikika uka itakuwa inashine. But what unasema polishes paka kidogo. Kidogo kabisa. You the more unapaka thick layers. The more it will take time to dry. And the more hard work utakuwa nayo. Ya kuifanya. Ishine. Eh. Hii ni merudia. 